The first angel blew his trumpet, and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. As the energy from the solar storm hits, it creates massive waves through the Earth's magnetic field. These induce powerful currents that pulse through the grid system, burning out the transformers. The biggest solar storm in history now begins the world's biggest and longest blackout. New York has an added problem, the ground on which it stands. Some of the Earth's surface absorbs electrical charge, but New York's geology is resistant to it. So most of the storm's energy remains focused on the grids above, increasing the potential for total destruction. The full force of the solar storm is felt on Earth. satellite. Whoa, losing signal. Global communications are mainly handled by satellites, television, telephones, radio, internet, aircraft, shipping, and defense systems. A worldwide communications breakdown could quickly follow the storm. As the storm disables local networks, like traffic signals, it creates dangerous scenarios on the already packed roads. As power drains from the city, more complex transport systems are thrown into deadly chaos. There's a question of signaling on trains flipping from a red to a green. There's no question that a lot of people will not survive the rigors that would accompany a major global blackout. I think there's, there's hope that we'll get through such a thing, but there's also possibility that it won't be very pretty. Within minutes, the blackout takes hold across New York City, and the rest of the USA is plunged into darkness. Around the world, as electricity stops being generated, the modern world comes to a standstill. In densely populated cities like New York, reaching the top floor of the thousands of high-rise buildings will quickly become a matter of life and death. Without the elevators to move them up quickly, we're going to have to walk up 20, 30, 40, 50 flights of stairs. The sick, the elderly living on upper floors, people who need dialysis, how we're going to move them. Emergency services around the world will be taxed to the breaking point. As days turn into weeks and then months, the disaster will only get worse. The supply of food and water will soon stop, and then the real catastrophe will begin. The water and sewage treatment plants, uh, as both of them start to fail, will create the possibility of uh, diseases and germs uh, uh, affecting the water supply. So we have a continuing cycle of deterioration here, a, a spiraling downward of the systems that we're dependent on. And so I think we'll eventually see a population that's getting sick and can't get the care they need and needing to go to the hospital, but the hospitals aren't working properly. Diseases like typhoid and cholera, hepatitis and dysentery will be quick to return. As transformers across New York finally blow, backup generators for utilities like hospitals now kick in, but only for as long as the fuel lasts, usually calculated as being just three days. Very straightforward reality when hospitals' electrical power systems aren't working. The more fragile the patients, the more likely they will not survive. And uh, I hate to be blunt about it, but that's, that's the reality of it. In this scenario, more than 200 transformers will have been damaged in the U.S. In all likelihood, it could take two years to replace them. New transformers will go to the highest bidder, so it could take up to a decade for the poorest countries to get back on their feet.
this massive solar storm will take place someday. The sun is going to do what the sun's going to do. It's going to depend on how well we as mankind can prepare for this situation. As the blackout continues, the death toll will rise. The solar storm is over, but the global disaster has only just begun. These transformers can take a year to build under normal circumstances. There are only five factories in the U.S. and the U.K., most of Europe, Japan, Canada, and many other countries are in the same boat that we're in. We won't have power in some parts of the U.S. for months, maybe even more than a year. This may not happen in your lifetime, but it's not science fiction. We know that one day in the future, the sun will unleash a terrible storm like this. There is no way we can prevent it. The next cycle of extreme solar activity is predicted to happen in 2011.